Hey guys, Xiaomi today I want to show you guys my Lucifer farming team for Giants and Dragons. There's also the Wind Demon version of this farming team I'm using right here, which is a bit slower, but applying the same logic. For Dragons, I'm not sure if there's going to be any budget team that is similar, but I'm going to show you guys anyway. And I know this video is not very educational because about two people in the comment section can probably build this team. But once in a while, I get people asking the runes I have on my farming team. So I just want to make a quick video to show them what runes I have on my farming team. So first, we have the AoE Wave Killer. That's going to be Julie. Julie is on Fatal Blade, Attack, Crit Damage, and Attack. And this build, I want to optimize having the most amount of attack stat as possible while having a lot of crit damage as well. So as you can see, these runes are pretty stacked like really really good quality and we oh, i like this one so much i think this one was a quad but a low quad if this is a higher quad this julie will be so much more perfect for artifact you want additional damage by attack percent and the same goes for the other artifact as well because you are hitting the golem without any defense break and artifact damage ignore defense and you will build julie with fatal and you do a lot more damage with additional damage by attack. And also damage down water because the harder unit to kill will be the golems in the trash wave. And also you want the total speed as you can see right here. You can turn it on by going here, here, turn on speed. You want the total speed to be above 169. That is the minimum speed for giants and I think for dragons as well. So having a bit higher speed allow you to speed tune other things a bit easier. Next up will be my defense breaker, Prelia. Prelia is on triple fight, speed, HP, and HP. Prelia is not on a damage bill for a particular reason that I will talk about later. Prelia will have damage down on water and some extra accuracy in skill 1 and skill 2. The skill 3 cannot be resisted if the target is immune to stun, which is the mid boss and the final boss, so you don't have to care too much about accuracy for skill 3. And you don't need to have max accuracy for your Prelia. You can, you don't really have to. My secondary wave killer and a boss killer will be Lucy. Lucy is on rage fight, attack, crit damage, and attack. Pretty good rune, I must say. I think this is not too bad. I could have higher attack, but this is the best I can build for my Lucy because I have to split my rage in between Lucy, my R5 farming team, and also some PvP unit. So he's not using like the top, top, top set, but I think this is not too bad. With damage on water, this artifact is a disappointment because I only have pretty much too low roll into damage on water. So I still want to look out for a better artifact. I have an HP main stat artifact that have higher percentage on damage on water, but it's HP, so the damage actually become lower. My other side artifact is going to be crit damage. So just trying to find crit damage, first attack crit damage, skill one, skill two crit damage, all that good stuff and your Lucy should be doing very good damage. Next up is my mid boss and final boss killer, my Luna. Rage fight as well, attack with damage and attack. Pretty solid rage fight set, I must say. 2k attack with pretty good damage overall. I didn't grind this because I don't want it to be too fast. And that is my Luna. You also want damage on water. Once again, only 14%. I think you want to have like 20% and that's going to be like the goal for your left side artifact for PvE damage dealer. And then for my right side artifact, we have skill 3 crit damage because skill 3 is the one that's going to kill the boss. I don't even max on skill 1 and 2 because you don't really have to. You want first attack crit damage, you want just overall crit damage for your right side artifact, for your Luna. And lastly, we have the Deborah who will be carrying triple fight. She move once in the blue moon. When all things goes wrong, she has to move. But overall, she will never really take a turn. We have triple fight as well, just HP could rate attack. And because she has to move once in the blue moon, I build her with a bit more damage so that when she moves, she actually does something. All right, let's go for a run. So for this one, Julie will be taking first turn doing the big AoE damage. And then I have my prelude to move after because I want my demon damage on mid boss to be applied with defense break. And then I have, oh, as I mentioned, Sometimes she has to take a turn because I didn't do enough damage for some weird reason or the damage calculation become a bit off because in this game, the damage you can do on the boss is actually not a fixed amount of damage. 
it ranged from one number to another. And sometimes when I hit all the low number for the first three unit, then my blacksmith have to move. So that's why I build her with a bit more damage. So what she when she take a turn, she actually can kill the boss. But when I hit the right number, the boss should die. And I can't really make my damage dealer stronger, which is kind of a problem. So why do I have my Prelia on HP type? Because Prelia skill 1, 2, 3 are very different from one another. It also depends on whether she applied the defense break in the first or the second hit. So I used to run a crit damage Prelia and she do very good damage, but too good. And that is a problem. In this stage, if you hit the boss a bit too hard and the boss HP go lower than 50%, the passive the water golem get activated and it has damage reduction. And when that happens, my shitty Luna cannot kill the mid boss on time with, with one shot. And then she will leave too much HP for the hammer to actually finish the boss, which is also a problem. And the fix that I found was to have Prelia just not do a whole lot of damage. And that just fixed my run entirely because her skill to apply defense break with the first hit very consistently and do very good damage because of the double hit. So sometime with the skill two, she hit way too hard and that was a problem. And then there was a secondary problem with this team as well. So my Julie, even though you saw the runes were pretty good, sometimes I find that my demon used skill one on the remaining golem. I don't know why. Maybe it is because there was only one golem left. Let's say Prelia killed the other golem accidentally and there's only one golem left. Then my demon used skill 1 and not skill 2. And then it makes the demon use skill 2 in the mid boss or the final boss, which is not ideal. You want the demon to use skill 1 in the mid boss and the final boss. So I can't make my Julie any better. That is like the absolute best I can do for my Julie. But I can't really make my demon use skill too. Like, I don't know why. So one way I found is that if I have my Prelia move in front of my demon and not do enough damage to kill the golem, then I'll be left with two golem with one very close to death and that will guarantee my demon to use the skill too. That's how people used to run Lucian back in the day when you have Julie Lucian and when you leave an enemy target low enough, then Lucian would always use skill three. And that is the logic behind my slightly tankier, lower damage Prelia. I had to test so much to find the sort of perfect amount of damage that Prelia should do. And so far, this has been really, really good. Sometimes the blacksmith have to take a turn in the mid boss because I don't know why. I can't really fix that because I can't make any of my damage dealer hit a bit harder. And I can't make my Prelia hit any harder. I don't want to. So the run will be like slightly longer, which is totally fine. We are still rocking... If I'm lucky, 19 seconds. If I'm unlucky, 21, 22 seconds. And if I'm very unlucky and I miss defense break all the way, okay? Because you are relying on Prelia as a single defense breaker. Her chance to miss defense break is around like a couple percent because she has multi-hit, she has skill three that cannot be resisted. So her defense break chance is through the fucking roof. Very, very good. But there will still be run where I miss defense break and I'll lose, which is totally fine. When you run this fast and you lose once in a while, I can accept that. But I'm running giants like incredibly fast at the moment. What if you don't have the LDs? So the first thought I had was to run Mephisto. I can even lower the Mephisto crit rate because we are primarily hitting water unit. So you don't need the max crit rate. So here is Mephisto with a bit higher crit damage with better left side artifact and pretty decent right side artifact as well. So with the Wind Demon, it is pretty much the same team up until the mid boss because you don't have the damage boost from the passive of the Lucifer. So I'm not sure. Okay, we still kill the mid boss, but I think that will require your Luna to be very, very well ruined. I mean, this entire team, I would say is very well ruined. This is not an early game beginner guy team. This is an end game team. So as you can see in the final boss, my Luna could not finish the boss in one hit and that will make the run a bit slower. I'm not sure if I'm going to consistently kill the mid boss or not, but so far it is pretty much the same team, but you just replace the Lucifer with the Wind Demon. So if you have very good runes, very good rage and fight, you can probably do this team as well and use the Wind Demon instead of the Lucifer. The Lucifer team 
was really good and I think a bit easier to build in terms of the raw damage output. But for this team, it is doable as well. I just need to make maybe have a better artifact on Luna for damage down water. And I could probably kill the boss with the Luna and achieve like the 21 second run as well. So if you have the Wind Demon and you can match my rune quality, I think you should be able to build this team and have very, very fast giant run, especially in this period where you can run booster from the event to maybe get more swift or get more despair, depending on what you want. Then you might want to build this very, very fast team. God, I'm just missing like a bit of damage and I could do it. But because I have Lucifer, I don't have to do this team. However, if you don't have Deborah and you want to be really safe, I would recommend using a Wind Homunculus on pretty much a full damage build. I think as much fight rune as you can. And the Wind Homunculus is going to be the mid boss and the final boss finisher. Of course, without Deborah, you won't be doing the same amount of damage. And your run will be probably 23 to 24 seconds, I think. So we are getting close to the Tashar team. And I think Tashar team might be easier to build because we're not running that much faster anyway. And the rune requirement for this is pretty crazy. So I'm not sure if this is worth it if you are running the Wind Monkulus because the I think the Tashar team is 24 seconds or 25 seconds or maybe the same amount of time. And this, you need to run a freaking insane Julie and you need to run an insane Luna and in pretty insane demon and you need very good fight runes on your team so that Julie can actually bring the, the enemy down to a, an amount that your demon will actually use skill to all the time. So if you don't have Deborah, I'm not sure if it's going to be worth it. But hey, if you want to challenge yourself and build this team, let me know in the comment section down below if you can actually build it. 22 seconds. It's a bit faster, but is it really worth it though? So here is my Dragon's team. Starting off with the AoE defense break that happened maybe half the time, which is totally fine by me. We have attack with damage attack. If I can have more fight rune, I will, but I can't. My wave killer, if AoE defense break happened, Lucifer on the same rune build. We have Raok on a fight will because I'm also using this Raok for my necro. So I need the will set because you want to protect your, your Raok team against a star silence when necro bots steal it. But if you're only using this Raok for dragons, then triple fight it is. And then we have Ikaru on a fight guard build as well and slower than the Raok or in this position, same speed, but because Raok is placed on top, the Ikaru will move after Raok. And then lastly, we have a star on a Fatal build. This is my second star. The first one is on Vampire because I want to use it for Necro. The second one's on Fatal because I only want to use it for Dragons and I want as much damage as possible. And I ran out of Rage, so I'm running Fatal. And then a star have very high attack base, so Fatal is not too bad. So the team is not like Giants where it will happen the same in every run, but because team up can pick a star as well and she can clear wave if the Shana decide to go for the AoE attack. But overall, it is still very fast. I think my average 30 run is around 12 minutes, which is also really good. And it also depends on who the doggies pick in this stage. And that will make the run time quite different from time to time. But because overall, it is still really fast. And I think it's a bit simpler for me personally to build compared to the other variation where you have to speed tune and tune the damage or whatever. Here, I just make sure everyone do very good damage. And that's all I do. <laughs> I don't have to worry too much about turn order or whatever because yeah, it's pretty simple in my opinion to build and it works pretty well. And I don't have to change too many rune build and I can reuse rune build from other content and it works just fine. I wish I can do a bit more damage. I think if my star is on Rage, I could probably kill the boss right at that moment. But because she's on Fatal, the damage is not as good. But once again, this is my Dragon's team I've been running for the past couple months now. And it's pretty fast. I could really go back to the Liam team if I really want to. But I can use the Rage set that I, I put on Liam or any other unit on somebody else. Because I don't want to build another Rage build. Of course, if you are farming something, like for the entire month, you probably want to build only that team, but because I'm too lazy and I want to farm things and I don't have to rerun for anything whatsoever, 
I decided to go with this team instead of the usual speed team that require a bit more careful building and speed tuning and damage calculating and all that. This is like a, I slap it on, it works just fine. And this team was given to me via a YouTube stream commenter. He told me to build this team. I just cannot do it. And it somehow worked out just fine. I had to fine tune and give it a bit more damage a little bit. And it's like the team. I have to really do much about it. And it works just fine. So that is my dragon's farming team. Sometimes it's a bit slow if you miss defense break with Shina. But there's really nothing you can do about it because you are using Shina as your main defense breaker. The faster your team, the lower the success rate. And there's really nothing you can do about it. But so far, very satisfied with this 25 average second farming team. And that's my Lucifer farming team. I try using him and other bosses, but it's not really worth it because the free to play team or because the boss require too much mechanic to actually kill it, make it really hard to put Lucifer in there because Lucifer is just a raw damage dealer. He doesn't provide any other utility compared to a damage plus defense break kind of thing. But maybe if you know any Lucifer farming team for auto dungeon, let me know in the comment section down below and I will see if I can build it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I fucking hate having a good farming team because if I really want to, I could clear 3000 crystal in a day if I really want to, but I don't. Sometimes I have to bring myself to farm necro to make it slower for myself to burn my crystal. Anyway, thanks for watching. We have flags, but I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.